Hi, good afternoon and welcome. We are in studio here this afternoon and we're talking sports with Val and Val joins me today. How are you, Val? Well, a lot going on, Steve. I mean, you know, we always like to say we're thinking about things year round and obviously the big news earlier this week, even in, though we're starting football season today, is that Ashland Shade of Noblesville is transferring to LaPorte Lalimere. And by doing so, she is essentially conceding that she will not win Miss Basketball because right. you have to be attending an IHSA member school in order to win Miss Basketball, and you can only win it as a senior. So all of a sudden, it's kind of a wide-open race. Yeah. Do you know anybody who might be a Miss Basketball candidate in our area? Because uh, I do. I've heard of a, I've heard of a name, and it, it might have Ashlyn in it as well. Yeah, yeah. I think Ashlyn Brooke is now a candidate, or, mm -hmm. or at least a better candidate than she was before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that might sound... I don't know if you'd say she was a leading candidate, but in 2018 at this time, would you have said that Jack Kaiser was a leading candidate for Mr. Football? True, true. So I think it's possible, and I think uh, her chances just improved a little bit with Ashlyn Shade transferring essentially out of the IHSA. Right, because she is completely ineligible to win it, and uh, it was pretty much a lock, right? She was, mm -hmm. she was the 2023 20, Miss Basketball. Oh, she was until, the, the best yeah. player on the best team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, it's a it's kind of a head scratcher to me. I'm not quite sure, you know, what the what the thinking behind that was. I know you said why why would you do that after you've already committed? You know, she's going to UConn, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm sure that it was a a decision that was you know not taken lightly by her and her family. I'm and, sure, yeah. yeah it so. just doesn't make any yeah, obvious sense, right? So I mean, uh, if Noblesville has developed you this far, I'm sure they coach uh, Buckley down there has done a good job. I yeah yeah. Yep. So yeah, that uh, that really opens things up, and yeah, I saw a lot of things today that uh, you know that top ten in the in the list, and and Ashlyn Brooke definitely in that uh, category. When you lead the state in scoring, yeah. Yep. So and not only that, but she, I think, being committed to Ball State certainly it doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. I think it helps because now it's like okay, we want I want to I want to watch this kid play because she's going to be hanging around our state for four more years after this year. Yeah. And I mean, those sometimes those relationships that fans develop for kids, they're meaningful. Yeah. When it comes to Mr. Basketball or Miss Basketball. Now we just got to get the uh, people that vote out of Indianapolis mm -hmm. a couple times, you know, to get them to see uh, what what's going on up here. Yeah. Hopefully they make make a couple trips to Royal Center. Right. Now that's not the only thing that's going on. Tuesday, the IHSA Executive Committee is meeting, and that is going to be huge because we should find out softball and baseball. Uh, class and sectional assignments on that day. Yeah. So now we have again. We're, so we're thinking about spring sports too. We're thinking about winter sports with Miss Basketball. We're thinking about spring sports too because a lot of questions we're going to be having to answer. First of all, what class will Tippecanoe Valley be in for softball? Are they going back up to three A? What class will Rochester be in for softball and baseball? Two A or three A? Mm -hmm. What class will Pioneer be in for softball and baseball? One A or two A? Right. What class will North Miami be in? Uh, again, going a little bit outside of our area. What class will North Miami be in for softball and baseball? Obviously, right. a tremendous softball program, and they've got Lauren Duncan coming back. They're going to have, have a really, really. I mean, they were pretty. They were actually pretty young last year, mm -hmm. and one regional. And yeah. now, will they be in one A or two A for softball? Will they be in one A or two A for baseball? Because I think they're going. I think they have a very good baseball team next right. year as well in North right. Miami, and even going further outside area. What class will South Central be in for softball and baseball? Right. 1A or 2A, their softball team made it to the state finals. Their baseball team won regional last year. Mm -hmm. And they and their 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 baseball team was lo they had like eight sophomores. I mean they were they're right. loaded. They they were young. Right. So yeah, and their so their softball team has just been a perennial powerhouse. So it's going to be very interesting to see where these teams are going to line up. They release all the information all at once, classes and sectionals all at once. So it's going to be an interesting day on Tuesday. Yeah, not only what division do you end up in, but uh, where are you going to go for sectionals? And like you said, with South Central, there's a lot of people in the 1A, 2A uh, northern area that are uh, kind of, you know, watching this with bated breath to see because South Central has yeah. been kind of beating up on folks for a while in, right. in the uh, north there. Could we have a 2A softball sectional with Pioneer, South Central, and North Miami? Could. I mean, it's not crazy, yeah. I don't think. Yeah, and and like you said, you know, with Rochester moving up to three A in basketball, girls basketball, mm -hmm. where where is that going to put them in the softball thing? Right. So, 
Yeah, it, that's interesting. But Could we have a baseball sectional with Rochester and Wabash and Winnemac? Right. Because, I mean, Wabash and Rochester were the top two teams in the TRC last year, baseball-wise. Winnemac won their conference in sectional. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, they, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, and that's coming out on Tuesday, their executive meeting? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, not much else going on, right? There's nothing going on tonight uh, around the area. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no big deal, right? No, no big no deal big yet. Deal. Uh, it is finally Football Friday here, mm-hmm. and uh, we are super excited to be back and, and get going with the 22 football season. And we're going to be over at Barnhart Field here in a little bit. And the Rochester Zebras, you can't open up your season with a much bigger game than they've got with the Southwood Knights coming in. Southwood looks to be a, a top team in 1A, a top team in the TRC. And uh, the Rochester Zebras have uh, struggled a little bit with Southwood over the f- last few years. 2014, you said, was the last time. Mm-hmm. So they're they're looking to get off of the schneid as far as beating Southwood. And, boy, it would be a great start to their season if they could get a win versus the Knights. It really would be. And, you know, it was interesting. I was talking with Coach Ron Schaefer the other day, and he's talked a lot about conditioning. Mm-hmm. He said we we really emphasize it. He goes, our, he said he remembered last year's game at Southwood when you you thought the team looked tired by toward, towards the end of the first quarter, mm-hmm. and by the end of the third, I, I remember I remember that game, and I just remember by about the halfway through the third quarter, both teams just seemed exhausted and they were just kind of, you know, kind of grabbing instead of really tackling, and so I think that's going to be key tonight. And you know, it was interesting. I picked up my Hoosier, uh, f- my uh, Indiana Football Digest uh, book. And if you turn to the Southwood page, and what does Coach Snyder say about his team? He goes, we played worse in the second halves of games last year than we did in the first halves of games, and we've got to have a greater commitment to the weight room. Mm-hmm. So what does that sound like? It sounds like he's worried about conditioning as well. Yeah. And so it could be, you know, who outlasts the other. Rochester should have more numbers. Uh, now, we kind of we looked at Southwood's roster. They had 34 kids on their roster. That's a pretty good size roster for them. That would be an increase from last year. I think they were around 25, 26 last right. year. Meanwhile, but Rochester registers is going to have more numbers. They're going to have about 43. So can the Zebras outlast the Knights, or will, will the opposite happen? I mean, I think, I think that, could, that could be a big factor. Well, and the one thing, too, you got to assume that with the increase of numbers by 8 to 10 kids, probably a lot of those kids are younger. Mm-hmm. Coming in, you know, as freshmen or maybe sophomores this year. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Rochester Zebras have, have good numbers, and, uh, you know, like you said, the emphasis on conditioning in these early season games, it's always huge, right? Because of the weather, it's hot, it's muggy. Uh, you haven't really been out in uh, game conditions yet here in the, in the first week, so. Right, and a scrimmage can only. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's very controlled. Yeah. And what you're doing, it's, it's not a game, and, yeah, you're going game speed, but you're not going uh, – as long and as hard as you are during a regular game. Right, right. And, of course, it's, yeah, it's controlled. I mean, it's, you know, 15 plays or 10 plays or 8 plays, and then right. you get it, yeah. So, and, of course, the coaches want to get a, give everybody a look during a scrimmage. It's not just not that way during a regular season game. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's going to be a huge one here at Barnhart for the Rochester Zebras, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Of course, you're uh, filling in a little bit of a different role here this year. You're going to be on the air on uh, our broadcast as well as on WROI with Randy Wynn. So really looking forward to uh, to listening to uh, that as we're uh, progressing with the uh, video. I'm really thrilled, and people of WROI have been great. And uh, after this is my 19th year covering Rochester football, and I'm going to actually be on, be on point and actually talk about things as they happen. So Yeah, yeah. Don't get so engrossed in your notes and your <laughs> yeah. stats that you forget that you got to, you know, put your commentary to it. Right. But I will, I will be helping out with stats as well. So, yeah. yeah. So we're really looking forward to that. It's going to be a huge game. And uh, we'll just go down the list of uh, other games that we've got. So the other home game yeah. of our teams that we have, uh, Wawa C traveling to Tippecanoe Valley. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about Tippecanoe Valley uh you know, they had some graduation losses. They had some big-time graduation mm-hmm. losses. They're going to be playing with a new starting quarterback. Uh, obviously, you know, when you have a, a stud on the line like Wade Melanson graduate, you're going to have a, a big hole to fill, literally. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, they, they have a ton of pieces coming back. I mean, they look to be just yeah. as good as they were last year. Yeah, they lost a lot, but don't feel too sorry for Coach Mo and his guys. Uh, I think the key to this game will be can Wawasee's offensive line block Valley's front seven. Mm-hmm. 
because uh, you talk about Dalton Albert. I mean, he is – I think he was under class all state last year as a sophomore. I mean, mm-hmm. he's still only a junior at that defensive end spot. Okay, so if you're going to send a second guy to – you're going to put the tight end on that side and make sure he gets double teamed. Well, then who's going to block, you know, Bailey? Who's going to block – those other guys, Kyler Johnson, who's, I mean, Kyler, from what, from what we've heard, Kyler Johnson's been looking really great. I mean, he's, first of all, he's a tall kid. I mean, he's 6'5", and a, they say he's, Coach Moriarty said he's lost weight, and he, but Coach Moriarty made it sound like a bad thing. He goes, we need to park him at McDonald's for a few hours, but <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's a good thing, because I think, I, I think he's going to, if he can really move, I mean, and boy, because, I mean, he, you know, he plays center on the basketball team, so he's got that good footwork. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's going to be tough to block. And then the interior of the defensive line, those tackles are tough. And then you've got Noah Prater at that middle linebacker spot, and he's kind of sniffing everything out. I mean, and then, you know, they've got so much speed at the outside linebacker spot with guys like Carl Parker and those guys. I mean, and then you've got Wade Jones in the, as, at safety. Right. And, I mean, he is just... You know, he hasn't he hasn't done much of anything his first two years. He only led the state in interceptions yeah, last year. Yeah, so, not much, yeah. uh, can can Wawasee block Valley? Is I think is going to be the key. That it's a you know Valley beat Wawasee forty two to seven last year, and that was a Wawasee team that only won one game, and Wawasee averaged less than ten points a game last year. So they, they only scored seven against Valley, and the one the seven they got was late in the game when the game had been decided. So uh, can Wawasee block Valley, and can can they uh, sustain possessions? Yeah, because if, if if it's three and out, I mean, it's just going to be a long night for them. So Valley looking for a new quarterback this year with the graduation of McBriar. Who uh, who are they looking at? Uh, do right. you think? Well, when I when we talked with Coach um, Moriarty on Sunday, uh, he said it's a three man race between Marcus Jansma, Cody Eastgate, and Nate Parker, and he isn't he hasn't ruled out using multiple quarterbacks in this okay. game. So uh, if Nate Parker doesn't play quarterback, he's going to play running back. Okay. Um, Carl Parker is going to play some running back, uh, and then you've got Dalton Albert fullback, and he's uh, he's going to get the ball a lot more this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, and he is he's not going to be fun to tackle. Yeah, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> I'm going to say that much right now. Uh, you, um, do you look for the uh, offensive attack to be kind of a, a mix like it was last year? They did throw the ball quite a bit last year, but with the new quarterback, do you think they'll the, you know rely on the ground game more than they did? I think they're going to rely on the ground game a little yeah. bit more than they did. Um, it was interesting. I mean, they averaged around 10 passes a game last year, but, I mean, Branson McBriar was so efficient in those. I mean, because he would be like 8 for 9 or 8 for 10 or mm-hmm. 7 for 9 every game. And, I mean, and these weren't like dump-offs or screen passes. I mean, these were these were long passes, and he was really accurate with the deep ball. It's just it'll be hard to get that chemistry, I think, between quarterback and receiver. So I'm guessing they'll be run-oriented, and then maybe we'll see if they – throw in a few more passes there as part of the game plan as the season progresses. Yeah, probably more as they nail down exactly who ends up in that quarterback's position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Kasten Comets traveling to West Central. Um, Kasten has kind of uh, had West Central's number the last couple of years. Uh, even yeah. three years ago when they lost, it was a very, very close one. So um, what are you expecting as, you know, Kasten is also looking at a new coach and also looking with a lot of new faces. Right. I mean, Landon Schaefer's back at quarterback for Kasten, and he, um, he didn't play quarterback all the time last year, but relatively speaking, Landon's a senior now, and he's been playing quarterback on and off since he was a freshman mm-hmm. at the varsity. West Central's got a whole new quarterback and a whole new running back, so uh, I think Kasten's, even though Kasten's doesn't have a ton of experience, I think they might have more experience than West Central does. Um you know, talking with Coach Ulrich the other day at, at the Moose, he was like, yeah, offense is something we do in between def- playing defense. I mean, he's he has really hit defense hard, mm-hmm. and he's talked a lot about open field tackling and mm-hmm. just getting people on the ground. West Central's got a good running back in Aiden White. He's a senior. We've seen him on the basketball court. He's a good athlete. But he hasn't played a lot of varsity football. Um, I think they're going to be relying on him. Um, they're gonna, West Central's going to try and get, get around the perimeter. So we'll see if Caston speed wise can handle it. Um, I think you know, um, you know, uh, Coach Ulrich's going back to the wing T, which is kind of the offense that he ran during his first in. Uh, you know, they were more of a triple option team under Will Porter. Now back to the wing T. Uh, curious to see who's just going to get the ball in their hands. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, some some new faces. I mean, he he even gave the ball to some some freshman kids like Jabez Yarber as a freshman. Mm-hmm. Saw some carries in that. 
in that scrimmage uh, last week against Northfield. But, they, you know, they've got kids like Evan Howard, too, who's a senior who's been kind of waiting his chance. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a, a very interesting to see if Casson can establish that running game. Yeah. You know, you talk about the, the kids that graduated. Obviously, Sam Smith, I mean, he, he's going to leave some big holes in, on both sides of the ball there. He was right. kind of the do-it-all uh, everything for Sam Casson. Smith and Sam Smith and Grant Hickel, I think, had seven combined for 17 of their 21 rushing touchdowns last year. Yeah. Combined for like uh, like over three quarters of their rushing yards. So you see a lot of new faces with the ball in their hand. But Coach Ulrich said he goes he goes these kids weren't he goes these kids were unutilized. But he he he's pretty confident in in their ability to to, to carry the ball. He thinks they can be productive. And the the numbers seem to be. The best that they've been there for a few years. Around 25, yeah. Uh, and I talk with Coach Ulrich, he goes, it's more than 11. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's his that's his thinking. I mean, well, a couple years ago, it was barely more than 11. Yeah. So, I mean, right. to, to have uh, some kids on the sideline there. Right. He, he really, th- it sounded like talking to him, uh, from what I interpreted what he said, he, it really helps in practice. Yeah. Because you how you can line up. He goes, he goes, when you look at some of our winning teams that we've had at casting over the years, you go look at 2010, 2011, 2012, that three-year period. Because we really only played about 13 kids in the whole game. Mm-hmm. I mean, we played so, um, but having those numbers will help you out in practice. It can right. help you line up, have a scout team. So yeah, yeah, I think I think it helps out. And there's, you know, we're going to see Pete Duvall at center again, and um, it's it's a it's a wing tee, but it's a shotgun wing tee. Okay. So you need a good center, and Pete is that. And then yeah. uh, makes sense to freshman as well. Uh, on the line as well, so um, yeah, Pete's not a bad commentator either. I wish we could have him for football, but we we appreciate that he's out there on the yeah, field. Yeah, I wish we could mic him up. Yeah, NFL yeah. film style. Yeah, one of these days we keep threatening to do that. One of these days we're going to do that, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, we haven't yet. Talk about jo- Josh Sullivan is going to be key on that in that fullback spot as well. We should yeah. mention him. Yeah, talk about teams that are uh, starting off with big conference games. Uh, you know, we talked about Rochester Southwood, Culver. On the road at North Judson, Liberty Field, you talk about a rough start for a team. I mean, this is a really good North Judson team, obviously a regional championship team last year. They did have some graduations, but, man, they got some uh, really talented kids. Obviously, Cheyenne Allen starts it off for them. Uh, So it's going to be a tough one for Mm -hmm. Coach uh, Zayner. uh, Got a new uh, offensive coordinator there with Austin Faust. Uh, You know, so... Yeah, good. Here's your first game as offensive coordinator. You're going against North Judson's defense. Yeah, uh, I think that you know North, North, North Judson did graduate Brendan uh, Benson, who's their uh, nose tackle, the 300 pound nose tackle, which is really really good. But they've their offense, their defensive line is still going to be really solid. I right. mean, maybe no superstars like Benson, and they're really good at the linebacker spot. That Logan Radke kid is really good, and. Um, they've got another Frazier, and then Connor Benson, who's Brendan's literally little little brother. He's a very good safety in mm-hmm. back there. So this is a North Judson team. I don't know can if you can make hay up the middle, or if you can maybe try and try and get some misdirection, try and get around the perimeter. The word that I always think of when I think of North Judson's defense is disciplined. I mean, they just don't. You can't run misdirection on them constantly. They just don't bite. Yeah. So um, and they and they they really tackle well. North Judson. They they just don't miss tackles. So. Uh, it's going to be, you know, uh, talking with um, Mike Zayner and Austin Faust the other day. They, they, it's not going to be an up temp. It's not going to be that much more up tempo of an offense than what they had in the past, and, and that makes sense, especially when you're going two jets. And um, they're going to use a lot of a lot of the play clock, try and try and drain the clock, and try and dominate time of possession. I think that's going to be key, and they're going to give the ball to Shane Schumann a lot. Yeah, I mean, they've still got Shane Schumann, so mm-hmm. they're they're not, you know, completely without. Uh, horses there and uh have you heard have they kind of settled i know there was uh, some talk of uh you know who was going to be the quarterback have they kind of uh, settled on quarterback? jason cadle seems to be the guy okay. now they've got the two McEwen twins who are both freshmen one's a quarterback and one's a receiver um i think i think he'd prefer to wait and give them time to develop and practice yeah. um but they're, they're, they're both going to be out there uh eventually yeah uh and then I know Emiliano Ortiz has taken. Uh, supposedly, they looked at him over the the summer, but Mano is going to be a, a wing back or a. He's going he's to do a little bit of everything. He's going to be kind of like a wing back or running back. They'll put him in the slot. They'll try to just try to get him in open space and get him to use those wheels. 
How are they looking on the line? I know they had some uh, graduations that's there. Gonna, yeah, that's going to be big because you graduate Austin Zaner, Alex Zaner, and Hunter Evans, and now you've got kids like Stephen Pugh. Uh, Hunter Evans has got a brother, Robert, who's going to uh, – freshman, I think, who's going to play some. Uh, but, yeah, line play, offensive line play is going to be huge because you've got to be able to block these guys. And it's a bunch of new guys. But, you know, Coach Zaner raved about uh, Stephen Pugh, said he's just a great leader mm-hmm. and, and is really going to factor both at, at center and, and on the defensive line as well. I know the the numbers maybe are a little down for Coach Zayner. Um, yeah, it's hard to believe the numbers are higher at Cast than they are at Culver. Yeah. That's we haven't said that very often. Right. So uh, you know, hopefully they can get through here with uh, everybody healthy and, mm-hmm. and keep going. But right, and they've got to get and defensively they've got to get Cheyenne Allen on the ground. I mean, he is. That's easier said than done. Right. I mean, he's such a threat. I mean, he is a threat running the ball. He's a threat catching the ball out of the backfield. I mean, he's mm-hmm. he's he might be the best pass-catching running back I've seen mm-hmm. in 18 years of covering high school football. Well, he's a tremendous return guy. And he's, yeah. I mean, and, wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's – and this is his fourth year in the varsity. I mean, he yeah. is – yeah, I don't need to tell Culver fans how good he is. So <laughs> you, they've got to find a way to tackle him. Um, I think, if you know, Aldrich Harper is back as their starting quarterback, but, you know, it's going to be kind of that kind of that flex bone. He's going he's gonna to tuck it and run a few times, but Allen's their big play threat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see, you know, not only tonight, but you know how the conference plays out. Because you talk about Hoosier North Conference, uh, you talk about North Judson, obviously, but you talk about Laville. I mean, look at what they're coming back. They didn't lose anybody from that team last year. Lucas I mean, Plummer is, if he's not the best player in this conference, I don't know who is. Yeah, and, and I mean that's I don't, I don't make I don't make that claim. I mean I I think he's better than Cheyenne Allen, and I. I know Cheyenne Allen's really good as well, but Lucas Plummer does everything for that team, and he is a beast. Yeah, and, you know, you look over to the uh, west, and Knox looks to be much improved this year. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting yeah. conference and race. And I, I, I love those LaVille running backs, too, Paul DeWitt and Noah Richhart. Uh-huh. And then they've got that Owen Smith kid who is, uh-huh. I mean, he is a, I mean, he is a threat to take it the distance for wherever you are in the field. So they are they're going to be explosive offensively, and their defense gives up. What is it, nine points a game or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean the, the only guy who had any success running the ball in them was Drake Bowen of Andrean, and he's going to Notre Dame. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be an interesting conference race. You talk about the Hoosier North Conference. You also got to you got to talk about Pioneer, who's been uh, the dominant force in in the Hoosier North uh, football wise over the existence of the conference. They suffered their first conference loss ever last year against Winnemac. They're going to have a tough one on the road. They're going down to uh, Walton. They're going to take on Lewis Cass, big county rivalry. Um, you know, yeah. Lewis Cass uh, looks to be pretty good this year. They've got some uh, some senior kids. They've they've talked Tyson Good into coming out and playing football. Yeah. And and just looking at uh, the article in the in the Logansport paper, I mean, size wise, you know, they're six five, six six, six five. You know, I mean, yeah. wow, they're gonna they're gonna be ahead and. Uh, shoulders taller than most of the Pioneer players. Yeah, I talked a little bit about this too in my game preview article this morning about I mean, Coach Barry said this and I I was kind of like, oh come on you're, you're just exaggerating. But then I looked it up and he was really true. He goes, some of the Lewis Cass players are a foot taller than some of the Pioneer players. Yeah. I mean, LJ Hellis, their quarterback, is 6'5". <laughs> Luke Chambers is 6'5". He's, a, he's 6'5", 230, tight end. Yeah. Try That's... tackling him once he catches a pass. Right. Tyson Good, 6'5". Uh, Ethan Llewellyn, who's another one of their wide receivers, he's 6'6". Mm-hmm. And then you've got Tuff Ubler, who's 5'4", 125. <laughs> and he's going to be playing back there. Uh, Guffey, Luke Guffey is a freshman. He's like 5'6", mm-hmm. 150. I mean, so Noah Van Meter is, you know, he's like 5'6", 5'7", 170. He's going to be playing guard and outside linebacker. I mean, Caden, Caden Hill's kind of the tall guy in the defensive backfield. He's what? Six one, six one, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. but I mean, even the Lewis Cass guys tower over him. So yeah, yeah. So when Coach Barry said, "Yeah, they're about a foot taller than we are," I'm like, "Oh, come on!" But he, yeah, he's right. They are about a foot taller. Yeah. And so yeah, but uh, again, it's Clayton Mannering's third year. I mean, and you know, he's got a veteran coaching staff, including a Hall of Fame coach on his coaching staff. His dad, Scott Mannering. Yeah. So yeah, I mean the. Lewis Cass is there. There's a lot of positive vibes coming out from coming out of that camp, from what we hear. Yeah, they didn't get a chance to play last year, and you know this, it's always a heated rivalry uh, between the two. Obviously, Cass County schools. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's 
it's a pioneer team that I think a lot of folks thought over the summer that, you know, this is going to be a big time rebuild for coach Barry, but uh, after watching them and, and listening to some of the things coming out of the scrimmage, I think there's a, there's a little bit more of uh, positivity coming out of it than, than originally thought. I think, um, it's going to be interesting to see what they get out of the fullback spot and the wingback spots on offense. Mm-hmm. You know, we know about Caleb Sweet, and then they've got, you know, um, Tyler Zellers and Caden Hill. Um, well, Ryland Toloza is going to get some time at fullback. Uh, Seth Schmel is going to get some playing time back there, though where exactly we don't know, but he's going to get some playing time. And then... Um, so how will that? How will the three seniors on the offensive line blend together with the two freshmen, mm-hmm. uh, Van Meter and Schnurple? Mm-hmm. So it's going to be. I, th- I think. I think the tackles are pretty solid when you talk about Gomer and uh, uh, Miller. Uh, no, Miller's going to be playing tight end. This would be the younger Legrand Cody. Okay. He's going to be at the right tackle spot. So I think the tackle spots are pretty fine. It's those obviously the guards are just so important in a wing T. So mm-hmm. uh, and Noah Van Meter, how, how is he going to be able to move around? And then you've got the young center and Schnurple. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, interesting to see how the this offensive line plays. But Pioneer doesn't put freshman and guard lightly unless they're a pretty good player. I would imagine. Right. right. So that's going to be an interesting yeah. one. Yeah. And then the other interesting thing is defensively going from a three four to a four three, mm-hmm. and that puts. And Caleb Sweet will be calling at least calling the signals both offensively and defensively because yeah. he's the quarterback and he's the middle linebacker. Yeah. So he's going to be calling basically every play offensively and defensively in the huddle. Mm-hmm. So we talk about Caleb offensively and how much impro- um, his year last year when he went from offensive line to tight end to quarterback. Well, he's going to be playing a big role in the defense as well. Yeah. Well, and, and last year as you started the season for the Panthers – they weren't really uh, sure where some of those people were going to go mm-hmm. in that offense. And then you had Brock Robinson that was injured yeah. at the beginning of the season. Now the uh, the offense seems to be more settled, but now the question marks may be more so on the defensive side of things. Right. Now, Caden Hill, he was a cornerback two years ago. He's a safety now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, talking with Coach Barry goes, hey, our safeties make a lot of tackles because you gotta you got to be able to read your keys. And if you know a run's coming, you got to be aggressive. And you can't, you know, you just can't sit back there in the – Backfield and wait five yards downfield to make a tackle. You got to be aggressive. You got to make some tackles. So, it's obviously they trust him. But Eli Guffey, you know, he's a freshman. He's going to be in that safety spot, and he's going to. He has a lot of responsibility too. But Adam Barry said that he really just, he really communicates so well, and that's kind of why that why they gave him that spot. So, curious to see how this pioneer defense plays. Yeah, and of course your cornerbacks are going to be dealing with some really tall wide receivers. Yeah as tall of a set of wide receivers as you'll see all season. For sure, yeah. So that's going to be interesting. And, and like you said, or like I said, it's it's a it's a big rivalry game anyway. So, uh, yeah. you know, I know there's been some jaw and kind of going back and forth on social media all week long. And uh, Pioneer beat Lewis Cass 44 to nothing two years ago. Yeah, and the, the year before that, Lewis Cass gave Pioneer the only two losses of their season. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, and then if you go back to the Jack Kaiser years, obviously, you know, Lewis Cass – uh, struggled, yeah. you know, throughout those years. So, another interesting thing is that I was talking with Coach Barry about Caleb Sweet, a quarterback, and he goes, "We really didn't give him too too many pointers last year. Once he took over quarterback, we didn't want to fill his head with too many thoughts. He was such he was such a good athlete. He was making plays, but they really kind of hammered in kind of the fundamentals on the footwork at that quarterback mm-hmm. spot over the off season. So I'll be curious to see how he's kind of taken in if he's more refined this year. Yeah. Remember, he didn't become the starting quarterback until like week. Was, I think it was week seven or week eight last year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a couple of weeks there at the you know, offensive line, and then uh, two or three weeks on the uh, tight end spot. And yeah, it wasn't until the Knox game in which he be, was yeah. in the starting quarterback. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't really. Uh, it was kind of a surprise when when they said you know Caleb Sweet's going to be the quarterback, but you know he did a really good job, and as he had an off season to prepare for this year, let's you know it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, any other football notes here before we uh, take a quick break? I think that's about it. Um, you know, uh, the, the two teams that I, I've been hearing a lot about these past through, after the site after the scrimmage were Knox and Lewis Cass. Yeah. And I'm, I'll be curious to see how uh, that Knox Winnemac game goes tonight. Yeah. It's going to be uh, you know obviously Winnemac rebuilding twenty of their twenty two starters from last year graduated. Yeah. So. 
Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a little bit of a process right. there at Winnipeg. There's one coaching move that we didn't um, mention over the summer, and I know it's not necessarily in our area, but uh, Herb King, a guy who I've known, uh, get to know, uh, he um, changed jobs over the summer. He went from Seeger to Fountain Central, okay. and of course Herb is a 1980 Tippecanoe New Valley grad. Mm-hmm. Herb is in the Indiana Football Hall of Fame. He yeah. took that Rockville team to the state finals a couple of years ago. He's one of those Charlie Smith guys who, you know, played with Scott Bibbler. So hmm. um, kudos to Coach King and his new job. Well, it does have a little pertinence now because Rochester and Seeger are going to be in the same section. Right. Seeger has, so Seeger has a new coach. I don't know much about this new coach. They were right around 500. I think they did get a vote in the poll, but um, it's hard, hard to know about Seeger at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, Lafayette Central Catholic, I think, is ranked number five or six. Yeah, yeah. So that, they are the only team in Rochester sectionals in the top ten to start the season. Yep. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about the week that was here on RTC TV Four. Advertise your business or service with RTC TV Four. Advertisements on RTC TV Four will run during our local programming on Channel Four and Channel Forty One. Your ad will be produced locally through our commercial production services for no extra cost. With an ad purchase, you will also get a banner ad on our sports blog written by our locally renowned journalist, Val T. Get more eyes on your business or service with RTC TV4. Call today at 574-527-4408 or please visit our website at www.rtc4.com. Welcome back. Here we are talking sports. It's a football Friday, the first one of the 2022 uh, the yeah, 2022, I said that right, the 2022 football season, school year. Uh, we're really looking forward to that. And uh, we got going, got some uh, live broadcasts for you again this year. We started with the uh, volleyball match on Tuesday with the Rochester Zebras hosting the Pioneer Panthers. And, you know, that was, we knew for Rochester, obviously, graduating their frontline girls, mm-hmm. uh, Emily Hughes and Lexi Thomas, that they were going to be smaller this year than they've been in a couple of years. But, uh, you know, we also knew that it was going to be a tough first couple matches of the year. They went on the road to Plymouth on, was it Saturday? Yep. And then uh, had uh, a very good Pioneer team coming in here on Tuesday night. And uh, you were at Plymouth and watched that one, and then we did the one on Tuesday. And you, Seems like the direction is in a, a positive manner. I think Aaron Lee, yeah, Aaron Lee thought the team played much scrappier and much better against Pioneer than they did against Plymouth. Um, even though Plymouth is a four A school and Pioneer is a two A school, I think Pioneer is a little bit more formidable. Um, I think uh, just the scrappiness overall. I think the confidence they played with. Um, I think the two setter system looked a little more fluid. I think uh, the decision making. Uh, I think the bl- the block was a little more active. W- whether it was, uh, I think you saw there, whether it was uh, Bollinger, Audrey Bollinger, yeah, she looked really good. Uh, she's come along. Yeah, uh, you know, had a great freshman year and, and looked really good to start off her sophomore year. And there you see Alexa Kusakis, who's not only just a great athlete, but also a really smart volleyball player. Mm-hmm. You know, she's got to get. She's going to get some more swings this year. Part of this two-setter system, and then Lily Lett's going to get some swings as well, uh, as part of the two-setter system. And so I, I think they worked out the key. I think they served a lot better uh, against Pioneer than they did against Plymouth, and I think they received serve a lot better. I talked with uh, Aaron Leap after the Pioneer match. She said, "Yeah, we spent all of Monday's practice working on receiving serve because we knew that Pioneer was going to get after it." And she thought they did better, uh, but she there's still even more room for improvement. Uh, now, she's somebody who said that, hey, the Tomahawk Tournament in North Miami is really where we kind of get our lineup straight every year. And, of course, that's coming up tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it, it was better. But still, Pioneer um, was able to expose some of those holes in the Rochester defense, especially in the middle of the court. Pioneer tipped more than I thought they, than they typically do, but they, they were very effective tips. Mm-hmm. They did a good job of reading. And then... Um, you can just tell Pioneers, um, their players are just a little more uh, sophisticated volleyball-wise. I mean, in terms of some of their decision-making. And, you know, you, you could tell, like, you watch a player like Brooklyn Borges, you can tell she's played a lot of volleyball. You, you, mm-hmm. you watch a player like Mackenzie Rogers, and you can tell that she's played a lot of volleyball. And so Pioneer was just, the, the yeah, they, they were just 
you know, I mean, first of all, Pioneer played really, really well at that at their home tournament, the Cass County tournament, and they just kind of continued on with that on Tuesday. Maybe they weren't quite as effective serving. They uh, they missed too many serves for uh, Coach Rod Nyes' liking. Uh, quite a few missed serves, but yeah, and and even the serves they got in were a little too returnable. But I think for Coach Nyes' taste, but um, yeah, I mean, this is a team that's looking really good. There are fewer subs, but boy, I mean, with you know, Borges and Rogers and Elizabeth Rance and on the front line and Mandy Weisenberger, they've always got a good block and they they just have offense coming from all over the place and it makes you have to defend so much of the court. Yeah. You see that right there. I mean Weisenberger, I mean she has really developed over the last couple of years and she's just a huge hitter and mm -hmm. uh it it's gonna but, be a you but know her play her, her placement too has just gotten a lot mm -hmm. better. I mean yeah, I mean, she, she, can take, she, she I mean, can take some off. And she, yeah, she's a higher percentage hitter, I think, I think as well. Mm -hmm. And that's just another one, too, that, you know, she was kind of stuck behind some really good players like Madison Blickenstaff and, you know, uh, a lot of just mm -hmm. really good players. And, Kennedy Korn, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you put a Mandy Weisenberger on any other team as a freshman, she's probably playing, you know, all varsity all the time. Right. But... Uh, yeah, you know, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, these two teams could meet again at Rochester come sectional time, and uh, you know we'll see. Uh, we know that uh, Coach Leap has done a great job of uh, working the team, uh, getting them better uh, with the process, and they're yeah. gonna, they're going to have to really get uh, get that process going this year. Right. Uh, um, you know, we saw. I, th I think some of the back row players look more comfortable for Rochester girls. Like I thought, MSLs played played well against Pioneer and uh, again when, you know Riley Holloway has really stepped up as a libero I think she you know to be a libero you kind of have to have that attitude of I want them to hit the ball to me because you're kind of in the line of fire I mean and, and you have to you have to show that you can handle you know <laughs> being aimed at and I think she Riley looks just terrific at that so I think it's just they just need more reps, and mm -hmm. I think they'll, they'll they'll obviously get a lot of that against at the North at the Tomahawk Invitational. Of course, their first match is against Northwestern, yeah. and you know if you don't know about McKenna Layden, she is a really good volleyball player too. She just had a little bit of a milestone last night with her 1,000th kill. Yeah. So uh, you know she's only six two. I mean. You know, going to go play at Purdue with her sister for basketball. Yeah. I mean, you know, she hasn't done much. <laughs> yeah. So. so Rochester will play Northwestern and Delphi in the pool play matches, and then they'll play two more matches after that. Uh, I think Wabash is going to be there. I know uh, South Adams is th usually there, and South Adams is very, very good every year. I mean, they are one of the top teams in 2A every year. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a good challenge. And then uh, Caston will be there, by the way, as well. Well, that's a that's a great transition, Val. Let's go. Uh, let's oh, take we, a... we should mention too. Pioneers going oh, to the killed, you killed my transition. Oh, sorry, that was a beautiful transition. Pioneers going to the Franklin Central invite. Pioneers playing Martinsville and Rossville. Okay. In the pool play, and then two more matches after that. Coach Nye says, "Hey, we're going to lose some matches. This is the time to get the losses out of the way. Martinsville's a good four A program. Rossville's going they're going to be tough too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they play they play they, Rossville's got some kids who play Boiler, Boilers Junior with the Pioneer kids, so yeah. they're all friends. Yeah." Well, it'll be a good, uh, you know, litmus test okay. for the Panthers to see where okay. they're at. All right. So, sorry yeah. to kill your transition. Yeah, no, 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 it, trans it was your transition, okay. so you, okay. you killed your own transition. Okay. <laughs> but you were talking about casting, and the uh, the Comets were uh, coming in off of a uh, three-set win on Tuesday at home versus Carroll. They traveled up to Culver last night to take on the Culver Cavaliers. Big conference matchup. This is a Culver team. That is up and coming. They're still young, but uh, you know. I saw some highlights of this match. It didn't seem like a three setter. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you, you look here. So set one, Culver. Uh, you know, they were up twenty-one to sixteen, and you're going to see here in a minute. They end up uh, casting ends up coming back and winning that twenty-five twenty-one mm -hmm. in set one, and uh, you know that that's got to be kind of a deflating kind of moment for Coach Barrett and the girls to to be up like that by five and then you know end up losing. And you don't score another point. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know the other the other interesting part of this uh, dynamic was uh, Gina Hurlmeyer makes her coaching return to Culver on the uh, the floor where she uh, had so much success with the uh, Cavaliers 
basketball squad, but uh, she comes back as a uh, volleyball coach now mm-hmm. for the Cast and Comets. Right, and I think she's she's the right coach for Caston right now mm-hmm. in terms of you know she knows these kids very well and she knows how to she knows how to talk to them she's obviously respects them but she's going to push them in the right ways mm-hmm. and we saw that I you know I was a pioneer for the cast County tournament I saw that um and I think they're only going to get better over time. We've already seen girls like Alexa Finke and Macy Hinderleiter really step up as hitters. And so you're not going to be able to just focus on, say, Isabel Scales. And then in the back row, I, I was really – I mean, first of all, they, they, they don't have Taylor Schaefer back yet because she's on a mission. She's doing a missionary mm-hmm. stuff. So if they get her back, that'll give them some more height on the front line and will help out from a blocking standpoint. I, I could go Blues Brothers there. I'm not going to. She's on a mission from God. Well, <laughs> well. Yeah. Um, well she's not from Calumet City. but. Uh, <laughs> and then in the back row, you know, the back row, I thought, I thought they were, I thought, you know, Kinsey Mollenkoff has really stepped up. Mm-hmm. And then Addison Zippelman at Setter looked really comfortable back there. I mean, we we talk about you know Addison as a as a basketball and as a softball player, but I thought Addison played. She's really stepped up as a volleyball player as well. And then that two setter system, Delaney Lowry and Annie Harsh have been running that for years now. So mm-hmm. that that's not too much of an adjustment. Yeah. But it, it's it's a very athletic Class One A volleyball team. Yeah. You know, Isabel Scales, Addison Zippelman, obviously they get a lot of accolades, but you know. The name that keeps coming up in all the sports with them, you know, Macy Hindelider. I mean, how good has that kid gotten in, in all those sports as well? I mean, it's, it's you know, you, you think Scales, you think Zippelman, and you got to think Hindelider right there with them. She's got some hops. Yeah. I mean, very athletic, and, yeah. and she just, you know, maybe a little bit late coming to the dance, so to speak. You know, she wasn't as uh, highly touted coming out of junior high as, mm-hmm. as maybe Isabel and, and Addison were, but... Boy, she has just turned into a very, very good athlete for the cast and comets in, yeah. in all three of the sports. Yeah, Finky too is another girl who can jump out of the gym. I mean, mm-hmm. they, 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 I mean, because you're kind of worried about boy, Maddie Smith's graduating. Who's going to really, who's going to be really, really there to terminate plays? I, that's really not not been the issue so far. I think to miss Maddie, I think more just from a like a vocal leadership standpoint, and she just had a great serve. But yeah, there's a lot to like about that cast and team. Yeah, I mean, they won 21 matches last year. I think I've said this before. That, that might be the under for this year. Mm-hmm. They might win more than twenty-one. Yeah, yeah. And boy, big match coming up on Thursday night with Caston going to Pioneer. Mm-hmm. The first one was the Cass County Tournament. This one's the Hoosier North meeting. Yeah. And these might be the two best teams in the conference. Yeah, I mean, you got to put them right there, and 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 that kind of uh, you know last night kind of solidified Caston in their place up at the top because you got to. You know, you you keep talking about Culver, and you you keep talking about you know they're young, they're young, but they're they've got a lot of talented kids that are playing volleyball, and uh, that was yeah. a you know a three set win at Culver. That's Bryn impressive. Bryn Barron, I think, had something like ten kills last night against mm-hmm. a pretty good defensive team that cover that is very good at keeping the ball off the court. I mean, that's that's saying something. Mm-hmm. And I, again, I, I there it's um, it just they look. You can tell now that they played with each other for a, couple, a year or two. Mm-hmm. You can see that. I really like Taylor Darnell in the back row at mm-hmm. Libero. I like Shelby Oliveris. But it's and then those two the two bigs kind of up front with with Garland and Livy Overmeyer. Mm-hmm. They're going to give them a block, which I that's going to give them an extra demand. I, they didn't quite have that block last year. And then, you know, with um, yeah. And you mentioned Avery Garland looks like she's grown a couple inches. Yeah. So And she just looks so much more confident up there. Mm-hmm. Like she knows wh- yeah, I need to be, okay, this is where I need to be. I need to be here. Mm-hmm. Just looks so much more comfortable out there. Uh this is a team that's going to win a few matches. Remember Culver beat OD at OD on Tuesday night and that was the same OD team that knocked them out of sectional last year. Right. So that, you know, you look at that sectional. And obviously the question is going to be who can beat Triton. Because mm-hmm. I think Triton's won that sectional something like seven out of the last eight years. Right. Triton's got some athletes. I mean, Addison Veers, 
yeah. is an athlete. Yeah. And she's just a junior. Mm-hmm. And, but um, do they have, does kid, I mean, can Culver expose some weaknesses in that trade team? They've got to, you know, are they developing that confidence? And that's going to be interesting to see moving forward. Culver goes to John Glenn for a tournament on Saturday. I think they can play John Glenn and Knox. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll be a good, it'll be a good matchup. I think that'll mm-hmm. be an interesting comparison with those teams. Yeah. The the conference schedule that Culver plays, obviously, with the Hoosier North, and then and, and you talk about Triton being in the sectional, but, I mean, that's going to prepare them for sectional time. And um, Yeah. You know, they're, they're a team, I think, as, as they get some reps together right. uh, over the season, they, they should be much that's improved. It's going to be an interesting uh, sectional. Yeah. And, and, you know, my, my thing with Culver is, you know, how do they progress this year? Do they, you know, just get better and better and better as the year goes along? Right, right. And, I, again, they put in a lot of time to this program, and I think they're starting to build, they're starting to build it up, and the, you can see the communications getting better. And I wish I mentioned Grace Siebert at Setter, too. I mm-hmm. mean, she's really taking charge there. And her taking charge will allow Bryn Barrett more swings, mm-hmm. I think. And, and that's where you want Bryn. I mean, Bryn Barrett can play anywhere in the volleyball court because she's just played a lot of volleyball. But getting Bryn more swings will will help out. As well, we'll make them more. We'll make them a more efficient offense. Mm-hmm. So uh, the other game that we uh, filmed this week, uh, we were over at uh, Blacketer last night. The Rochester Zebras boys soccer taking yeah. on. Uh, one more volleyball note. Congratulations to Nicole Walter and the Argus Lady Dragons on a win over Granger Christian last night. Her first career win as a coach. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That was uh, that was a good win because you know. Our soccer is obviously king in Argus, and mm-hmm. you know, so trying to get a volleyball team together is has always been a challenge for for Argus. So yeah, it was a, it was a good early season win for them, and right. they they graduated a, a good chunk of their players from last year. They actually had a you know a decent senior class on the on the volleyball court last year. Yeah, I just went to the matchup between Plymouth and Tippecanoe Valley on Wednesday night. Plymouth won that one in three, mm-hmm. uh, but it's a Valley team. They're missing. Um, Erica Henderson right now is just a personal matter, and she, I think she was just ineligible to play, but they're hopeful to get her back. Getting her back will help out of the libero spot. And then Abby Cook's out with a back injury. She was supposed to be one of the two setters, so they're only really running a one-setter system right now with Avery Wagner. If they can get Abby back, that'll go to the, a two-setter system. I think will help them out more, give Avery a chance to make some swings because she's Avery Wagner is just a really good athlete, even mm-hmm. though she's only a sophomore. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's the volleyball we can review, I guess. Okay. Uh, boys soccer last night at Blacketer, the uh, cast and comments up visiting the Rochester Zebras, and you know this was a this was a game we did last year down at Caston, and, and Rochester got the the win there. But new coach, new team, a lot of new faces on the Rochester Zebras uh, pitch this year, and mm-hmm. um, you can see flashes, you can see pieces there with mm-hmm. Rochester Zebras, but obviously they're very young. They had. Uh, uh, several freshmen that were starting and uh, played pretty much the entire match, and so when you have that, you're gonna you're gonna have your ups and your downs. Yeah, uh, you know things got off to a great start. I mean, they they scored on an own goal and led one to nothing. But um, I think you know talking with Eric Backus, Coach Eric Backus of Rochester last, night, I think he was a little disappointed by kind of um, how they handled it, kind of emotionally. Uh, and there you see the first goal of the game, which was on an own goal. That was kind of just a weird play with Placencia kind of centering one, and it just deflected off a cast and defender and into the net. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think kind of being able to handle adversity, I think, is, is a big deal. They were coming off a 5-2 to two loss to North White on Tuesday, but he goes, Coach Backus was like, hey, we were down 3-2 to two with 20 minutes to go. We were playing great. We were right with a top-five team in 1A. And then when they didn't win that and it, he was kind of worried about there was kind of like a little bit of an emotional carryover, I think, mm-hmm. and then it kind of it kind of just dragged on in this game, even after they got off to a good start with that first goal, and so uh, I think there, yeah, the talk was kind of about handling that adversity after the game. I think I think that was something that seemed to bother him more than just kind of the the X's and O's of soccer. Uh, the ego, you know, he said they've really been obviously with a young team like this. They've really been working a lot at fundamentals in practice, um, and you can see you can see some of that, especially some of the defensive work they did. Uh, you can tell Wyatt Davis is going to play a big role on this team mm-hmm. uh, defensively, 
Uh, you can tell that Grant Bailey, the freshman, is going to play a big role on this team. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, it, again, it, it, it's a work in progress. Uh, you know, Coach Backus is a guy who's coached 10 years at the, at the Fulton County Soccer Association level, so kind of the club level. Um, you know, he's he studied programs like Argus and Bremen, and he's kind of, and there you see the goal by um, Jonathan Pacheco of Caston to tie the game. But Coach Backus is like, you know, why are they so much, why are they better than we are? Mm-hmm. Because their athletes aren't better than we are. So we've got a, so he really studied kind of some of the drills they run, and he, he basically kind of copied them, and he goes, we're going we're gonna to use some of those drills for ourselves. And he's brought on a veteran coaching staff, guys guys like Travis Bonfiglio and Luke Sutton and Tyson Kalischuk. I mean, Tyson has, you know, played co- collegially at Huntington University. Luke's going to help out with the goalkeeper. This uh, this right out of the halftime, uh, almost a Vinnie Stone-esque yeah. play right there, just uh, knocked out of the way. Yeah, it was that start of the second half that was big mm. because Coach Backus said that this that was probably kind of the issue at North White the other night too. We just didn't seem ready coming out of the l- halftime talk, and you know, I mean, they they take that shot, then they get a corner, and then that leads to a handball, which leads to a penalty kick and a goal. You see, it's kind of a just a madhouse, and there was a handball, and then here is the penalty kick by Rowan Jellison. And it, it was a little strange, too, because you had three of the six total goals that were scored that were off of PKs with uh, handballs mm-hmm. in the box. And you don't normally see that and uh, an own goal and, and three uh, PKs. Mm-hmm. So... And I put casting up two to one. Yeah, I mean, just like that. I mean, you had some some really good work there, uh, you know, by the uh, keepers on both ends of the field. But uh, there again, a, another rebound shot and uh, casting able to uh, to put that one in. Yeah, that was Pacheco again, and. Uh, yeah, I was talking with Narciso Sanchez, the casting coach, after the game, and yeah, I mean, you know, obviously after two tough games, they trying to figure out a lineup. They, he started the season with um, Brock Hook at keeper, then he went with Braden Dossman, then he went back to Hook, and he really liked the way Hook played against Rochester, and then um, again Pacheco. Uh, you know, he, he he's just so fundamentally sound. Mm-hmm. And he gets a lot of goals that way. And then, um, again, they're going to miss Colby Pugh. He's out for the year with a torn ACL. But uh, they hope to get Talon Zider back. Uh, he'll help out defensively. I thought um, we, we asked him about Caleb Stinson after the game, and he goes, yeah, he's he's everywhere, and he's got to be everywhere for us. And I don't know what you thought. He, Caleb Stinson was everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, defensively, he he's he's – He's such a good athlete. I mean, mm-hmm. you see him out there. He's just a stand-up. Mm-hmm. And and this is going to be another one of those things, you know, just like we were saying with the Culver and then the Ro- the Culver mm-hmm. volleyball, Rochester volleyball. This uh, Rochester soccer team, it's just going to be a process. I mm-hmm. mean, they're they're very young. Yeah. But they have they have some talented kids, and they got a really good coaching staff. And I think they're going to go right. in the right direction. Right. I mean, I get the sense that Eric Backus is in for the long haul. Yeah. And, you know, one, one thing we talked – I talked about the feeder system, and he goes, he goes, oh, kindergarten, first grade, just dozens of kids, mm-hmm. uh, maybe 100 kids. I mean, just kids love to play. Third and fourth grade, still good numbers. Fifth grade, good numbers. Mm-hmm. And then once you get to about sixth, seventh, eighth grade, that's when the numbers fall off. Okay. And maybe they discover other sports, whether it's football or mm-hmm. cross country or whatever. And it's kind of – Getting those kids who played at the club level or the, or the FCSA level, getting them through middle school, mm-hmm. get them to play middle school soccer, and get them keep keeping them playing, keep keeping encouraging them mm-hmm. to play, and then then you get them at the high school level, and by then they're they're you know they're all in so to speak. Yeah. So he goes that those middle school kids that's that's going to be the kid, interesting thing, and that, that was interesting to hear him say that because obviously he's, he's as tuned into the club the the interest of the club level right. As anybody, because we, I think we always just kind of take it for granted. Like, well, 
here's a kid. He grew up in Argus, and he started playing when he was in kindergarten, and here he is now. He's a freshman in high school, and look how look how advanced he is. But it's it's never that easy. Right. You have to keep their interest in in the sport moving forward. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I mean he I think he's gonna he's got he's got a good he's he's gonna have a very uh, he's gonna be very involved in, in in trying to increase that interest, yeah. especially at the middle school level. Yeah. Uh, moving over to the uh, Rochester girls, they were on the road last night down at McConaughey, and they uh, picked up a nice win to start their season. Right, a three to one win, and a lot of new a lot of new faces this year, um, but a lot of old faces too. And I think you know they're going to be relying a lot on girls like uh, Kendall Bradley and Amy Williams. Um, you know, I think there's there's a pretty good amount of athleticism on this team as well. That had to have been hot last night, playing on that turf at McConaughey. Right. Um, numbers are a little bit down. Um, I think the, the key is keeper uh, at the, the, the goalkeeper spot because you lose Kaylee Woods to graduation, and you know, I mean, uh, she was so she was so key to that team. I mean, you didn't have anything to worry about for basically the last four years. So, mm-hmm. developing that keeper is going to be big. Um, but it's, I mean, again, you know, Rochester's the defending TRC champ, and they, they, I mean, they. They rolled to that conference. I mean, I don't think they really got much of a challenge. Getting by McConaughey actually last night, I think I think that was pretty huge. Mm. Um, but it's just, uh, yeah. I mean, again, it's the good thing about Rochester is that they they were getting kind of a balanced production from senior the senior class, the junior class, the sophomore class, and the freshman class. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, I you know I I'm not worried about numbers long term for this program. Mm. I think kids want to play soccer, girls want to play soccer here, and. I think it's gonna be a good team. I think and they've got some. They've got some leadership too. Yeah, I know. Like uh, Mackie graduated as well. She was a really good defender for him. Right, and so. Mackie's helping out on the coaching staff this year. Really? Yeah. Awesome. So uh, yeah, it's good to see them get a win, especially on the road at McConaughey. You know, a fairly good uh, McConaughey squad. So that's that's a good uh, yeah. way to start the season. Right. Right. I think I think that'll be a, that, well. We could look back on that and see how big a win that was, especially. You know, being your first game, having your first game of the season be a conference game. Yeah. Uh, girls soccer will stay there, uh, go up to Argus. The uh, Lady Dragons suffered a, uh, a tough one on the road against Kankakee Valley and came back and, and tied Plymouth. Um, maybe not quite the start that Coach Stone was looking for there for his uh, Lady Dragons, but uh, a couple of really good teams to start off the year. Yeah, I haven't talked with Coach Stone yet. From basically looking at the stats, it seemed I think the Plymouth game was a lot better, like a lot better. I mean, they really probably deserved to win that Plymouth game, and having to settle for a tie was frustrating. But they, they were down 2 nothing and got a 2-2 tie out of it. Um, again, uh, you know, when you've got girls like Emma Dunlap and Ariana Allen, I mean, you're not going to be lacking for leadership. And then Lily Hines is a junior, but she's played – as much soccer as anybody, yeah. and of course, Lily's just got eyes in the back of her head and soccer instincts that are just crazy good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the fact that they've been able to score goals is uh, pretty good. I think. I mean, I having a, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what they're like defensively mm-hmm. and what they're like at that goalkeeper spot because they lose Lizzie Edmonds to graduation, and I'm not sure they have a whole ton of experience back there. You know, Coach Stone. You know, he he makes no. Again, I I know him well. He said, "Hey, we start defensively. That's kind of where we build it. Then we build it from there." Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of curious to see uh, if they've had any defensive issues, or if they're just running running into some talented teams. Well, yeah, not only Lizzie Edmonds, but uh, Al Zom and Trump. I mean, yeah. those were two huge defenders for you. So, yeah. I mean, that's a big chunk of your backfield that uh, that you're missing. Yeah. So, uh, can they? Continue to possess the ball a good amount of time mm-hmm. uh, is something that we're going to see going forward. The, another girl I really like on this team, and we really don't talk about her enough, is Lauren McLaughlin. Mm-hmm. I mean, she is just so deadly with those free kicks mm-hmm. and uh, just a really smart, smart, heady player. And she's I think she's going to make an even bigger impact this year. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be any issues at Argus. I mean, they'll, they'll be fine. But, uh, you know, like I said, you're starting off with a couple of really, really good teams. and uh, Right. And then uh, moving over to the boys' side, there um, tough one against Warsaw the other day. Yeah, they lost eight to nothing, and this is just a young team. I can't recall. You know, you look on the grade levels, and I can't recall seeing the number nine so many times. I mean, they've got a lot of freshmen on this varsity, so mm-hmm. 
Uh, we have a lot to learn still about this team, but it's a Warsaw team that's ranked in the top 20 in 3A. Yeah. Yeah, what a way to start the season. We're going to be up there on Tuesday. We're going mm. to have uh, girls first and then boys uh, taking on Elkhart Christian. So mm-hmm. double header for you on Channel 4 on, yeah. the, on the web. So. But Argus has just been so blessed. I mean, not just the last year or two, but like the last – seven or eight or nine or ten years i mean they've just had a steady flow of great oh yeah great players who are also great athletes mm-hmm. uh you know you lose you lose kurt johnson i mean obviously people talk about michael richard and teddy redinger and yeah those are great they're great players but you also lose kurt johnson and caden brady and dylan kindig yeah. i mean you're just i mean there are just a lot of holes to fill and uh, i'll be curious to see how they how they matured going forward. I don't doubt their work ethic, but it's just an experience thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a rebuild year for coach Vanderweel, but uh, I don't think anybody's going to feel sorry for him a bit. And not, you know, a, it, not it, at the it, class one, a level. No. Right. And you look at it, they're back in class one, a, they could very well win that, uh, you know, and they're hosting the sectional again. So they could very right. well win that sectional. Argus game. plays by far the toughest regular season schedule of anybody in their sectional mm-hmm. by far. I yeah. mean, it's not even close. So uh, you, you might look at their record at the end of the regular season and go, boys, I don't know what, what's up with Argus, but really there might not be anything up. It's just a matter of playing just some really tough teams that game in and game out. I mean, they play Oak Hill on Saturday, and Oak Hill's going to be another tough opponent. Yeah. Um, another boys team that we cover that uh, has a pretty good start to their season going on, Tipeee Valley. They they have a two uh, 0 record coming in and uh, doing really well. Coach Brown, first year head coach, so yeah. Um, for there, right for Valley for Valley yeah. after what fourteen fifteen years at Rochester, mm-hmm. and you know John Ruiz is one of the best players in the area, and I think he's going to get he's going to even step up even more uh, this year. Um, I, I think they're. Um, you know, defensively, I think they they have to communicate well, but it sounds like they're doing so. I mean, they shut out Cast and they beat uh, uh, they beat that Metro Rage team, which is you know a club team of combined kids with Northfield and Southwood. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, things are off to a very promising start there. I mean, the, I sense a lot of I sense a lot of confidence. You know, I was kind of curious about who's going to score goals after you graduate a kid like Caleb Petkin, who was just so fast and such a big part of their offense. But it sounds like that hasn't been an issue at all. And then, you know, defensively they've been good. Uh, you know, Trevor, Trevor Brown coach teams always play a pretty entertaining brand of soccer. I mean, the, the ball's just flying up and down the field. Uh, Valley fans are going to enjoy this. I think they're going to enjoy what they're, what they're going to see here. This is, this is a step forward, and you gotta take, you got to be able to take a step forward because it's a conference that has been dominated by Manchester over the years, and Valley is, again, this is still a relatively young Valley program. I mean, mm-hmm. this is a program that's only eight years old. Yeah. And you know, can can Valley hang with you know the team like Manchester, who's been so good for so long in this conference? Yeah. And then after that, you got to go to the sectional, oh, yeah. where Manchester's there, <laughs> and you also have three top ten teams in your sectional, yeah. with Fort Wayne Concordia, Fort Wayne Dwinger, and Culver Academy. Yeah, not much going on there with that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, so, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, now, I haven't really heard any news out of Culver as far as soccer goes. I have not heard anything either. I think they had a scrimmage, but I have not heard. Uh, I've not seen a roster yet. But okay. I know Coach Levette is very dedicated to that program, and look forward to seeing them down the road. Yeah, haven't uh, they were spo- they were supposed to either. They were supposed to have played Hebron. Uh, Culver was supposed to play at Hebron uh, on Thursday night. I haven't gotten a score from that one yet. Okay. Culver girls were supposed to have played Peru the other night. I haven't gotten a score from that one. Culver would be heavily favored in that game. I yeah. would imagine. Yeah. Culver girls played North Miami yeah. uh, on Saturday, so that'll be. A, Interesting, interesting test. Uh, it's at North Miami, but again, you know, with girls like Isabel Villegas and Kaylee Hamilton, and you know, um, um, Cat, Cassidy Banks. Again, my Banks is confused, yeah. but I mean, they, they've got they've got weapons, and so it's it's going to you know, Culver won 14 games last year. They're going to win quite a few games again this year. Yeah. Uh, just again, it's another team who's going to be their goalkeeper because he graduates um, Sophie Heath. I mean, she was a big part of their team. Yeah. Also, congratulations to Culver coach AJ Nice became a dad really? this week. He and his wife Allison. Allison uh, used to be Allison Zaner. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. congratulations! Congrats. Wow. So uh, Andy's a grandpa. Well, Andy's been a grandpa, but uh, another grandpa. So that's awesome. So 
All right, uh, let's take a quick break, and then uh, when we come back here in our last segment, we'll talk a little golf, uh, cross country, and tennis. As uh, you know, the cross country teams and the tennis teams are now getting uh, underway with their seasons as well as the girls' golf. So we'll talk a little bit about that in our final segment here on a Football Friday. We'll be back in a moment talking sports with Val. Are you looking for a new set of wheels to get you from point A to point B? Mike Anderson in Rochester has exactly what you need to get you where you need to go. Whether you're looking for a new vehicle or a used one with great gas mileage, Mike Anderson in Rochester will be sure to fit you with your new dream ride. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-498-2626 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Welcome back here. We are uh, going to wrap things up here with our final segment, Talking Sports with Val here for a football Friday as we get ready to go over to Barnhart Field and watch the Rochester Zebras and the Southwood Knights uh, in a big early season matchup, conference matchup, and first game of the year, all that good stuff. Um, before we get too deep into this last segment, I uh, just want to remind everyone that um, RTC has uh, – a really big project coming up. Uh, we're actually started on it now, and if you see uh, something in the mail with uh, an underground agreement or um, a, a card that uh, talks about fiber, uh, we are building fiber throughout the Fulton County area, and actually we're doing a little bit in Miami County and, and quite a bit in Marshall County as well, but mainly for, uh, for Fulton County. Uh, if you live in Fulton County, within the next two years, you're going to have access to our fiber internet connections and um, the underground agreement is not uh, saying hey we're ready to get your fiber installed that's more of a thing that when we run the mains past you uh, we're going to have everything set to where we can actually run up to your house and then that's going to get you on quicker as, as we progress so um, just keep your eyes open because uh, there's a lot of stuff going on I know uh, the the, the construction meetings for, for uh, the guys over there, they just uh, talking about some of the stuff that they're doing and the different areas they're working, Lighters Ford area, Kiwana area, Fulton area, they're over in Akron, Mentone, I mean, wow, they're, just, they're spread around and uh, they're, uh, they're going to be busy, they're going to be hopping for the next two years, so uh, look, look for that to, to come your way if you're uh, in Fulton County and, uh, you know, is that, is that commercial with Michelle talks about you know it's you need more fiber in your diet uh it's it sure makes a world of difference if you haven't had fiber internet uh it's pretty cool so let's talk a little uh a little golf uh you know the two uh the two programs uh that we've really followed actually you could throw uh, pioneer into that mix as well now because they've kind of found their stride a little bit but mm -hmm. you know valley and rochester golf i mean they're just off to a blazing start this year. Right, Rochester with a great week already. They beat, they won a three-way match at Winnemac. They beat Winnemac and Knox at Moss Creek on Monday night. Shot one, a season low 177, and that season low lasted a grand total of one day because they shot a 176 the next day and beat Western 176-196 on Tuesday at home. Beat a Western team that made it to the state finals last year. When you when you get mm -hmm. into that 170 number, I mean, that's that's a good round. Yeah, for a girls team, yeah, that's, that's outstanding, and um, you know, it's that it's that top three, and it could be, it could be a different low score every night. It, sometimes it's Olivia Bailey, and some nights it's Ava Thomas, and some nights it's Peyton Moore. Um, you know, definitely. Uh, you know, I mean, it was interesting. I mean, uh, at the uh, the Western Invitational, which was last Saturday at Chippendale, Ava shot a 79, which was a career low for 18 holes. I mean, the first time she's ever broken 80, mm -hmm. and yet Peyton and you know, Peyton shot 87, and Olivia shot 87, and that was kind of viewed as a disappointment. <laughs> and, you know, for a lot of teams to have three players under 90, that's a reason to have a party. Rochester, it's a little, a little disappointing. Um, and when you say disappointing, that's not us saying that's disappointing. That's them. Th that's being them disappointed saying, with oh, themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, Peyton shot 40 against Western, and even she was disappointed with that, with the run, it, it, with the run that included three birdies, but she finished... Double bogey, double bogey, and eight and nine, and yeah, I mean, so this team is they're 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 holding themselves to a high standard, but boy, they put in the work, mm -hmm. so the you know they they should be, I guess. Yeah, yeah, they should be. I mean, yeah. they're 
But the like you said, of those three girls, any night one of them can be low, and uh, yeah, that's that's got to be a, a good feeling because you know that the pressure isn't always on you specifically. Yeah. Uh, you know, if Olivia's having a bad night, Ava might step up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's very uh, team oriented. Right. Delaney Barkman had a great day at Winnipeg. She shot 49. Mm-hmm. She can get under 50. That's going to be so key for this team. And Delaney's, Delaney's another kid who's put on a lot of work, mm-hmm. I mean, to, to, get, to get her game better. And, you know, she's a senior, and obviously she wants, you know, she wants to happen this year as well. But, you know, it's interesting. If you watch these, te- these girls hit the ball off the tee, they, this is, they all, their length off the tee is really noteworthy. Mm-hmm. I mean, oftentimes their opponent is hit, they're sitting two, and the Rochester player is sitting one, and the opponent is still away. And it's it's funny too because they're they're four foot eleven, right? And I Olivia mean. Bailey and Ava Thomas are so, they're they're so slight, but yeah. boy, do they! And and even Peyton Moore is not exactly a you know, <laughs> they're not gigantic. They're all not giants. They're, they're all medium. Well, to, you, you look at a picture of them, and they're they're all pretty similar in size. You think, okay, these are. But then when you stand next to them, you're like, okay, they're they're four foot eleven, five foot, five one, maybe you know. And yeah. but man, they can play some golf. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... It doesn't matter how tall you are when you're golfing. Yeah, they're good athletes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, and they're playing, <laughs> they play with these taller players, and, the, you know, it's like they're, yeah, they're just way down the fairway, and they're just kind of waiting, and their opponent hits their third shot, and maybe it gets past theirs. Yeah, it's... So the length off the tee has not been the issue. With Coach Thomas, it's been uh, iron play. Mm-hmm. You know, that your second shot on a par four. Yeah. Um, your short game, those shots under 100 yards. Yeah. Uh, Wedge play, mm-hmm. you know. So if they get if they get that down, that, then their sc- then their scores are gonna get really low. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Valley. I mean, they've just been they've been rolling all season. Oh, long as well. yeah. I mean, what? A, I mean, they 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 beat. You know, they they get Warsaw and Wabash coming to Round Barn last night, and they they win fairly handily. I mean, they, Valley does not beat Warsaw very often in girls golf. They beat them last night. Beat them by fourteen strokes. Did they really? 170 wow. to one, 170 to 184, and Wabash at a 217, and you know Madeline Weaver a 39, or I think it was, I think it was a 38, tied with uh, Warsaw's Abby Peterson for medalist honors. Lily Alt has really stepped up her game. I think she shot 43 last night. I mean, if she gets in the low 40s, boy, look out because, I mean, Molly Moriarty. I mean, and again, it could be with Valley's guy. I guess it's kind of similar to Rochester because I mean, Madeline's usually the number one player, but it could be Lily. It could be. Caden Smollett, and it could be Molly Moriarty. You could be the number two player on any given night, and they're all capable of shooting in the low 40s. I mean, 170, that's that's really playing well. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, at number five, I mean, Coach Malad, he's really happy with the progress of Maddie Thompson as well. Mm-hmm. And Maddie's just a sophomore. Yeah. One of the one of the few, because uh, a big chunk of that team is seniors. Right. The other four players are seniors. Mm-hmm. So this is a, you know, I mean... You know, we talk about Rochester's length off the tee. Valley Valley's one team that can can hang with Rochester off the tee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the other team we were talking about, um, you know, Pioneer. They they had a couple tough rounds up at uh, Round Barn. You know, Valley one night and then Rochester the next night. And but they've kind of found their groove. And and we talked about uh, Ashlyn Brooke being a potential Miss Basketball candidate. Uh, she has really found her groove on the uh, golf course in the last few weeks. All right. She shot a forty-one. The other night in a match against, uh, I think it was Delphi. And so, yeah, career low for nine holes for Ashland. Yeah, and I think she had shot uh, maybe a 42 the, the round before, which was a career low, and then and mm-hmm. bested that by one, yeah. you know. So uh, they've been uh, they've been finding their groove a little right. bit. Ashland has a cousin on the team, Mia McKegg. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, they got uh, Emily Schmaltz and Misha Price. And then uh, Corny, uh, Klein. Corny Klein is on the team. So. Yeah. Uh, four seniors and a freshman. Yeah, uh, Mia McKegg's the freshman. Yeah. So it's a team that's yeah. I mean, it's uh, I don't know if anybody has golf as their primary sport, but yeah, playing playing a little better and got yeah. you know got a win the other night. Yeah. Uh, Kasten uh, has a has a team. They they uh, I think had a couple matches now where they've had a full team score. Right. Uh, they've got uh, Anselma Ramirez and Julina Sherrick, uh, but it's still a young team. I I think Coach Phelps kind of taking it slow, kind of. I know it's exciting, Steve. I know. 
Yeah, just I know. I over just got all excited about yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, but he's talking about hey, we're just learning. We're, we're just learning the game and just mm-hmm. trying to have fun at this point. Yeah. So, but by the way, uh, Kat, the uh, I just say put just put out his fall bulletin and Caston will play in that uh, Twin Lakes sectional. Okay. With Rochester and Pioneer and Winnemac. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit. Uh, you know, and uh, Culver plays their first match on Monday. Okay. We're and this far into the season. Culver hasn't played a match yet, but. Okay, new coach. Uh, Coach Pugh Pugh has taken over for Coach Jacobson, who has retired. Yeah. Um, You know, we haven't talked much cross-country or in tennis yet. Uh, Both of those teams are now where, uh, you know, uh, they're getting going with events. Got a big cross-country invite coming up tomorrow here. Or tomorrow, right? Yep, it's the Zebra invite. It's tomorrow, and it's uh, that long, tough Rochester course with the hill. Uh, Pretty pretty thick grass, so... I wouldn't expect two great times if if they're. We'll see if any boy gets under eighteen. I'm not expecting that. Maybe I mean Chris Rohr is gonna. I think do for a big um, senior. Chris Rohr a senior. I can't believe it. Uh, <laughs> it but happens, you know, yeah. Yeah, Wes Steininger is gonna be a junior this year. I think Wes is really gonna. You know, I mean Wes had a really good track season. He was really running well by the end of track season. I, I expect Wes to really step up and have a great year. And then on the girls' side, I mean, Zoe Seward's one of the best runners in the northern half of the state. I don't think that's too much of an exaggeration. And then you add Araceli Ochoa, who looks healthy, and Kendall Bradley, who looks healthy. And then another Callaway. This is Allison Callaway. She's a freshman. Madeline's okay. younger sister. Oh, wow. So she had a great eighth grade year last year. Let's see how she does. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, they're not they're not big on numbers, so I think that's going to be it's going to be key, for, yeah, for, I think, from Alex Gudeman's standpoint of just, hey, we got to keep our runners fresh for the whole year because mm-hmm. you got you got a home meet and then you go to two North Miami on Tuesday, so two meets, two varsity meets in four days. Yeah. So it's uh, let's keep those legs fresh. I, th- I think I think that's probably something that he's probably thinking right. Uh, that's what I'm guessing he's thinking right now. We'll talk to him tomorrow and see see more of what training has been like this year. Saw the picture. Madeline has uh, moved in up at uh, Romeoville to uh, Lewis University. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, Good luck to her this year. So. Yeah. So we got the zebra invite, and then we've got uh, the other meet is coming up uh, tomorrow at Logansport, the Jacob Graf Invitational. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, Tippecanoe Valley goes down to Logansport tomorrow for that. Okay. Uh, Chesney Miller ran in the 21s last night at a uh, meet at Goshen. So Chesney is certainly another one of the top runners in our area. And then, uh, uh, obviously, Caston will be there. Uh, good numbers for Coach Zimmerman. He's really... Uh, uh, you know, but some new faces. There's a uh, uh, Camilla Hernandez Rios, uh, but I'm curious to see how this casting team does. Uh, uh, you know, Brianna Amasquita is on that team, but we'll see. We'll see how things kind of. It's really kind of early to say. I mean, it's kind of just a lot of new runners, so we'll see how things mm-hmm. kind of flesh out. The cast of boys are a little more. Uh, we kind of know a little bit more with Austin Dig and Edison Byron. They're going to be the the one two on this team. Mm-hmm. I mean, Austin. You know, Austin definitely, I mean, puts in the mileage. And Edison looks really strong. Uh, I'm expecting a really strong year for Edison Byram. I think they're going to be, that cast and boys team is going to be one of the top teams in the Hoosier North. Yeah. So they're going to be there uh, as well. And uh, Pioneer's going to be there. And yeah. that's a Pioneer team with a lot of good kids. Yeah, they've they've really come along. And, you know, I got a chance to watch a lot of them in the spring with the track season. And, you know, Leighton Dot and obviously uh, Violet Montgomery and, you know Jackson Baker and yeah, I mean a little they're, right. They're a little more experienced on the boys' side than the girls' side. A few more question marks on the girls' side after mm-hmm. Violet, but the, that, that's a good boys' team. When you talk about Meyer and Baker and mm-hmm. uh, Cooper, I mean that's it, and Dot. It's a good. That's a good team. I, uh, I know they put in a lot of miles over the summer together. Yeah, uh, all three of those boys. So yeah, Coach uh, Williams is. I'm, I'm impressed with the job that he's done there. And uh, yeah, uh, I think one of the, Austin Brook too. Austin you know, Brook, yeah. yeah. I mean, one of the better teams in the Hoosier North. They won the Hoosier North last year. I think they might be the favorite again this year. Yeah. Didn't really didn't really lose a lot graduation wise. Talking about getting older, it's hard to believe that Violet's a junior this year. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it uh, it tends to happen. So, uh, any other cross country notes? Uh, much going on in Culver yeah. cross country wise? Uh, no, not we. They don't start until next week. They go to Northwood next Saturday, the twenty seventh. I okay. uh, just want to give a shout out Argus. They don't have any boys cross country runners, but they got three girls. But the three girls they have are really good. Talk about Ava Stackhouse and um, Savannah Lyon. That's gonna be that's a good team, mm-hmm. or at least a good part of a team. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be I'm be keeping an eye on them uh, throughout the season. You know they're gonna have they're gonna have some good good kids there. Yeah. So 
Uh, we got a few minutes left here. Uh, Boys Tennis. Um, we haven't really talked about them yet. I know they're, they've got some matches in. I think uh, Zebras got off to a good start, right? Got off to a good start. They beat Triton last night 5-0, and they are now 1-0 and on the season. And I think from what we heard, Triton only had four players. One of the matches last night was a forfeit. Okay. But when you talk about kids like, uh, you know, Braden Zink and Brock Bowers, you've got, you know, your one and two are back. Um, I think there was a lot of talk about, you know, what were they going to do with um, Tanner Reinhardt's? Mm-hmm. Um, were they going to move him to singles or keep him at doubles? Uh, it sounded like they were going to move him to singles from what we, that was kind of the scuttlebutt. Um, but if that was the case, then who are you going to play doubles-wise? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, there was also some talk that Braden Zink might move to doubles. So, uh, and that Brock might play number one. So I think figuring out the lineup has been, I think, kind of the issue so far in practice. Uh, obviously, they've had the health issue with Drew Strasser. I don't, I don't think that's any secret anymore, but mm-hmm. um, w- without him, some, some other guys in the JV are going to have to step up. But I think, but again, numbers what, numbers have not been an issue with this program. Yeah. So yeah. off to a good start, but they go to the John Glenn Invite on Saturday. That's usually a pretty tough tournament. That's usually one of those. I think they, I think they'll probably be, instead of best two out of three sets, they'll probably just play one best one set. It's usually like a ten game pro set or maybe an eight game set. So um, it'll be a good challenge. I think it'll, it'll be a step up from what they face so far. Say that again, that they play just one set to ten? Yeah. Huh. Or, maybe, or maybe to eight. Yeah? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Kind of like in volleyball, when they go to a tournament, they just play best two out of three instead of three out of five. Yeah. They just yeah. knock that down a little bit. Right, because you, huh. you're playing three matches in a day, two or three matches gotcha. in a day. Okay. So we'll have that. Uh, so again, I think this is going to be a pretty, pretty, good, pretty athletic Rochester team. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to. Um, but again, I mean, how much? What is athleticism worth? It's kind of being able to execute shots when you're under pressure, mm-hmm. and being able to keep the ball in play and make the other guy make a mistake, make hit one more shot than your opponent. You know, yeah. Yeah. sometimes that's the key. Uh, but this is a team that, uh, yeah, I mean. The, they got a lot of experience last year, and I, th- I think they were, you know, they were they were playing pretty well by the end of the year. I think the schedule is pretty, you know, again once you get to the TRC, obviously you know Peru is going to be right there, mm-hmm. but can they compete with the Manchester's and the Wabashes? I think that's in the, in the Whitcos. I think that'll kind of determine how they kind of fare uh, or, or where they where they fit in kind of that conference kind of hierarchy. Yeah. Yeah. As for Tippecanoe New Valley, new coach Clayton Adamson. Uh, they're off to a one and one start. Uh, two close matches. They lost to Wawa C three to two. Then they came back and beat North Judson three to two. Okay. Again, Valley had no seniors last year, so while it's a new coach, it's pretty much the same lineup. Uh, Dylan Nice, he is a very very good number one singles player. Cam Manuel, we've seen him on the baseball diamond before. He's a very good number two player. Uh, Wyatt Ryder has been playing three. Uh, Anakin Pettit and Cooper Walls, they were our RTC players of the year last year, a very solid one doubles team. Lost a heartbreaker against Wawa C, won a nice match against North Judson last night. And then two has been uh, Cody Smith, who's a transfer from Rochester, and he has been joined by uh, Brady Minix. Okay. So they uh, split their first two matches. Split their first two matches. Clayton Adamson, you know, he was an assistant uh, under Nick Kinde. He's played a lot of tennis mm-hmm. in the past. So he, he was, uh, you know, I think he he was a good choice as coach. I think uh, he's he's a guy who will fit right in and and you know create a work ethic with that program that I think will will help out. But again, just as Rochester has to worry about Peru in the conference and Culver Academy in the sectional, Valley has to worry about Peru in the conference and Warsaw in their sectional. Mm-hmm. And of course, Wawa C they lost to Wawa C and Wawa C is a sectional potential sectional opponent as well. Right. Um, yeah, that's that's our tennis, right? That's the the two that we have. Yeah, we haven't heard where the sectional, where Valley sectional is going to be. We heard the Warsaw courts were under construction. I don't know if they're done yet. Mm-hmm. If they're if they are done, Warsaw will host the sectional. If not, then the sectional will be at Columbia City. Okay. Which, uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to to get there um, since they've finished that complex. But uh, you know, they built a brand new high school and and all the sports fields and stuff up mm-hmm. there at Columbia City, and mm-hmm. so. I know, uh, you know, that was a big project that was going on, you know, as I was transitioning into RTC full time. So mm-hmm. that's actually uh, hard to believe, but uh, tomorrow is uh, four years that I've been here full time. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, 
time has flown by for sure. So, yeah. Um, so we got uh, we actually have a little bit of time here. We're a little early. We got about five minutes. Uh, you know, what's what's your thoughts? What did we miss? What do you want to you know anything you you want to share before we go? Yeah, I, I've just been um, really. Uh, you know the the girls golf season I think has really gotten off to a good start. I'm really I'm really excited to see girls golf uh, moving forward. It just stinks that Rochester and Valley are in different sectionals, but I think that Twin Lakes sectional is going to be a lot of fun. At the end, it's going to be a, I can't remember the girls golf season where I've been ex- this excited going into kind of the season, seeing how these these girls progress. Uh, where you got a on one hand you've got a veteran Valley team, and on the other hand you've got a really young Rochester team. Right. Uh, and then. Uh, yeah, uh, and then cross country wise, it's interesting. I'll, I'll be interested to see. It seems like numbers are kind of down throughout the area, mm-hmm. but we've got a lot of really the runners we do have are all really good. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, Charlie Schwenk retired over the summer, and she taught forty four years, and she was so instrumental in getting kids involved in this town, in 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 running. Mm-hmm. Uh, just hey, give it a try, mm-hmm. and then and so many, and that leads to so many kids and boy. So, Cross country is so kind of yeah. My friend did it, so I did it too. So, hopefully, kids, more kids will get into cross country because it's a great sport and it's, you know, a, a lifetime worth of, you know, a lifetime of benefits mm-hmm. if you get into running because for, for for good health. Yeah. Um. So that that's what I'm what I'm hopeful of. Uh. And then um. You know, volleyball wise. Again, Pioneer has just really just put themselves at a higher level, and I'm I'm, I'm really curious. I, I you could argue that Pioneer is playing better volleyball now than they did at any time last year, and I know they were very good at, at times last year, mm-hmm. and they went seven and zero and won the conference. But this is a Pioneer team that I think has set themselves up for success at the Class Two A level. Yeah, and you talk about their numbers being down. I think it's actually going to be a, a little bit of a benefit for them because I, I think there was right. A we were just talking about. <laughs> Lacking numbers in cross country, and now we're just talking about being a bad thing, and we're now we're now we're, we're talking about this. But yeah, I mean everybody is so multi talented and multi skilled on that mm-hmm. team. Yeah, and it, it's it's going to be better, I think, for Coach Nye's rotationally. I, yeah, I think there's going to be a, a more steady rotation, and I don't think you're going to have to worry about you know, hey, why am I not getting playing time or anything like that. Yeah, not that uh, anybody was going to go to Coach Nye's about that, but uh, I'm sure there was maybe some you know, hey, why am I not getting a lot of playing time things. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's going to be fun. Obviously, you know, with with Rochester hosting not only the uh, volleyball sectional, but they'll be hosting the volleyball regional as well. Mm-hmm. So we're really looking forward to that. Of course, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I just I'm just really excited about football. You know, we're we're getting back at it here in just a few minutes, and just excited that that's back. And everybody is excited this time of year. Hopefully, they'll maintain the enthusiasm. Somebody's gonna be a little more enthusiastic than others. Yeah, I mean, after week one, but this is. Week one is always the nobody knows nobody quite knows what to expect. Yeah, week. and you know high school and all, all that all that work you did over the summer and all that work you you've done the last three weeks, and this is kind of your first test. Yeah, yeah. Do you you've pass studied, the test? You yeah. studied for the quiz and, yeah. and and you took the quiz last week with the uh, scrimmage. Now the test is here. Yeah. And, yep. See how you come out. So. One other thing, I saw I was at the Valley Volleyball match the other night, as I mentioned, against Plymouth, and I hung out with Sophie Bussard, yeah. who was in town. Believe it or not, uh, Dalen Bussard, who's a freshman on the Valley's volleyball team, is Sophie's niece. Okay. Remember, Sophie has two brothers who are like more than a decade older than she is. Mm-hmm. So Sophie is an aunt. She became an aunt when she was like eight. Yeah. <laughs> she... I actually, uh, her brother is, one of her brothers is an electrician. Uh-huh. And I actually, you know, would run into him from time to time on job sites. Yeah. Yeah. So Sophie and I talked with Sophie, and she is recovering from her torn ACL. She's still got the scar, but it hasn't been cleared for five on five yet. But, again, practice doesn't start until October, so mm-hmm. still working at it. But definitely in a good mood. No, you know, she wasn't wearing any crutches. You know, she wasn't on crutches or in a brace or anything. She was just yeah. walking normally, just pick, just getting strength back together and still has two years of eligibility to left. Yeah, that's awesome, and and I saw a thing too where she uh, is carrying a four point oh GPA, so uh, she's doing well in the classroom as well. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, I mean so. she Sophie's going to do great things after she graduates, whether that has to do with basketball or not. Yeah, yeah. 
By the way, Ann Seacrest got an assistant coaching job at a college, in, a small college in South Carolina. Really? Yeah. So. Okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. She's just fresh out of. She graduated last year, this spring. Yeah, I think I want to say it was. Iowa? Yeah, I want to say it was 2021 from Iowa. Yeah. Oh, two years. To, yeah, yeah. She graduated from high school in 2017. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I know. Uh, you know, she was always a, a huge fixture with Valley basketball. Oh, she just, had a great career at, at IWU. I mean, just yeah. Tremendous. I mean, just the best kid. Yeah. I mean, just as good, as nice a kid as you'll ever meet, and at the same time, a fierce basketball player. But <laughs> at the same time, she would, you know, she's the first kid to laugh at herself when she would do so. You know, when she would do something weird. I mean, she's just the best kid. Yeah. Well, we're going to wrap it up here for Talking Sports with Val. And coming up next, you're going to hear Val's voice again as we move over to pregame here. It's How's he going to get to the field this quick? Well, we're taping this, and we're going to play it right before the game. But uh, Val and Randy coming up next on RTC TV 4 as they give you the call of the Rochester Zebras Southwood Knights coming up next so we hope you enjoy it and uh good luck to the rochester zebras val good luck to you Mm -hmm. as you uh you know you've done a lot of games for us so it should be uh just second nature so don't worry about that (laughs) i think it'll be great so thanks for everybody tuning in and we will be back next week with talking sports with val